Hey, this is Waylon from Swiftwood Bows, and today I'm going to show you how I chase a ring on an Osage stave. So for those of you who are not familiar with Osage, um, I'll just give you a quick little rundown on it. If you, if you know about Osage Orange, um, feel free to fast forward to the action. So Osage Orange, also known as Bodark, um, hedge, hedge apple, Osage orange um, is considered a, a gold standard in bow wood. It's um, been used for a long time, um, starting with uh, Native Americans in the in the area of its original growth range, which was in the kind of central um, southern Midwest, and it was traded widely. Uh, it was considered a valuable trade trade commodity um, to Native Americans who didn't live where it grew. Um, it's a pretty special bow wood. It really has all of the important qualities that you want in a bow wood. Um, it has good tension strength so that it doesn't break easily on the back when it's bent. Um, it has amazing compression strength. Um, which allows it to be bent without the belly um, getting crushed um, springs right back into shape um, and it's very elastic um, it also is quite dense and tough um, so that it stands up to dings and nicks uh, pretty well and it, it has other qualities that make it great for bow making and that it responds to being bent with heat well you can put recurves in it very easily and um, manipulated in, in that sort of way. So it's, it's, really, it's really pretty amazing stuff. Almost as good as you. Um, I just want to show you what we're working with here. So Osage Orange, unlike um, a lot of the white woods that we use um, where you're just like hickory or elm or something like that where you just take the bark off and you leave a pristine um, first layer of the sapwood under the bark as the back of the bow. Um, with Osage, the, the really desirable wood is the heartwood. And so typically when people harvest an Osage stave, they will um, remove the bark and the sapwood and They'll seal up the back like this. This is this is all heartwood here. This has already been um, processed in that way. So the the back was sealed. Actually, the whole whole stave except for the belly was sealed. Um, and then when it's ready to be worked into a bow, the first step is called chasing a ring, and that's what I'm going to show you because we want the back of the bow to be one um, undamaged growth ring of heartwood and I'm going to show you here on the end what we're looking at so the the dark sections of each ring is what's called the late wood and that is the the hard dense wood that we want to use as the backing of the bow the lighter rings um, in between the dark rings are the early wood and that wood is lighter more crumbly not as structurally sound and um, but it also that crumbly early wood is what makes it so easy to chase a ring on Osage because your draw knife is literally going to glide right through that crumbly early wood and then just kind of skate right along top of the hard um, late wood and it makes it pretty easy to create a flawless back on the Osage. So I don't know if you can see, I made a little black mark um, on, on either end of one particular ring. That's the ring that I've chosen to be the backing for my bow. Um, so I'm going to tear off everything above that. There's not much above that, so it won't be a lot of work um, to get down to that ring. And this stave is going to be good for this demonstration because it shows um, a few particular challenges that you might run into when you're chasing the ring on an Osage stave. You'll see um, right here the, the, the rings kind of dip down 
So we're going to have to use uh, a curved tool to, to scrape out that area. If we use the flat draw knife to rip off that, we're going to be cutting into the ring on other parts of the stave. So we're going to have to be careful down here on this end. I think it only goes for a little section here um, that we'll have to worry about that. There's also going to be a few pin knots that we're going to have to work around as well as a slightly larger knot up here um, so I can show how to deal with running into a knot on the stave. Um, this is not, this is a good stave, it's not a premium stave. You know, it's got a big knot in it here, you can see on this end. Um, it's got an interesting wiggle here in the end which will add some character to the bow but would also make it a little more challenging um, to make a recurve out of this. But this definitely has good bow potential, it's going to have a nice clean back um, and some interesting character to it. So let's uh, move on to the next step and I will show you how we chase a ring. Let me start by showing you the few things that we're going to need to, to do this. Obviously we need our Osage stave. We're going to need something to secure the stave to work on. I have this um, great contraption called the Stave Master made by Keenan Howard for bow making. Um, it's a great tool. It's not necessary for doing this kind of work. Um, a good solid bench vise would work fine. Um, you could just clamp the stave down to a sturdy structure like the you know ledge on a deck or something like that you can get creative um, really all you need is a, a good stable surface and a few clamps um, but a, a vise or a shaving horse um, makes it a little bit easier but like I said not essential um, the primary tool you're going to be using is a draw knife um, there's some debate out there between what works better for chasing rings a dull draw knife or a sharp draw knife um, I think um, I think they both work fine. Um, you just have to be careful with a sharp draw knife that you're not being so reckless that you're going to tear down through the next layer. But in all reality, it's, it's kind of hard to do that unless you have really thin rings. Um, I use a sharp draw knife and I don't have any problem um, chasing my rings. And you're going to want uh, a scraper to clean things up and to work around the knots. And I also have this gooseneck scraper here that's going to be helpful for getting in those areas on this stave that have a, a dished out back area. Um, all right, I'm going to start here on the easy end. Well, maybe this isn't the easy end because this has the, the dished out section as well, but we'll start here regardless. Um, so I picked out my ring, I know what I'm going down to, so I'm going to tear away everything that is above that ring. Um, if you're not familiar with draw knife usage, we always want the flat side up and the beveled side down, that gives us a lot more control, and I'm just going to start, I'm going to be relatively careful here because I don't have a lot of material here to take off. So I can already see that there are some drying checks, drying cracks here in the back. So as I go along, depending on how bad they are, I may choose to go down further, but they may disappear pretty quickly and not be an issue. Um, we'll see, I haven't gotten down to my ring yet. Okay, so on this side, I'm just getting down to my ring. I'll bring the camera in close here in a minute um, so you can really see what I'm looking at here. Um, the, here, let me get it a little bit further so it's more obvious and then I'll, I'll show you what I'm looking at. So 
So I'm going to use the gooseneck scraper here. I've just got this little area to dish out. So my camera cut off and I did a little bit of work that didn't get recorded. So I'm going to show you what I did before I go any further. Um, so I flipped the stave around because um, I wanted to work on this side that was a little bit less complicated first just so you could get a sense of what you can do on a less complicated stave. So I got down to my, my gro growth ring that I want here. You can see the hard yellow the hard yellow late wood here um, and that's what I want as my back and then you can see this crumbly white um, early wood where I put this marker line here and that's what I'm going to be cutting through to expose my my back and I'm going to go a little bit further here um, sitting in this position working slowly up until I get it established a little bit more and then I'm going to turn around and I'm going to get that draw knife um, under this crumbly early wood and I'm just going to rip it out as I go along um, and you can be pretty aggressive as long as you don't have any knots that you're tearing through. You have to slow down at the knots um, and I'll show you how to deal with those in a little bit but whenever you've got kind of a straight clean run um, you can be pretty aggressive. It, you don't need to sit there and pick at it um, because the difference in strength between the late wood and the early wood is so extreme that you're just going to be able to blast through that crumbly um, early wood and just skate right along the top of the, the late wood without too much worry of, of damaging it. All right, like I said, I'm going to work this ring up a little bit further. So I've got a whole other ring above it, so here I can be pretty aggressive. Until I get through that ring. I want to go a little slower as I cut through my final ring. Now, I'm going to turn around. I'm going to catch that draw knife right there under my ring. And I'm just going to tear it out. It's going to feel scary at first, but As long as you've got your angle right on your blade, it's just going to ride along and it's only going to blast off what's above your ring. I've got a little knot here that I'm trying to be careful with. So what happens is if I blast through this knot, it's going to tear out behind the knot and dig probably down into my, my ring and so you gotta pick pick around the knots a little bit carefully. You get as much material off as you can with the draw knife, um, but you're gonna want to come back with the scraper and clean up what's around that, um, so that you're not tearing the knot out. I've got a knot up here that I need to start being mindful of, so I'm not going to
rip too hard into that area. I'm going to slow down as I get closer to it. So here there's a little island where I think it dips in a little bit. So I'm gonna come I'm gonna leave that proud a little bit and come back with the gooseneck scraper and clean that up when I'm coming back to clean up that knot. Kind of use your draw knife as a scraper just to clean up the last crumbly bits and make sure you're still following the same ring. All right, I'm gonna readjust my stave here. with the draw knife. So I'm just kind of leaving this little area around the knot proud with a little bit of the, the growth ring that I'm tearing away. I'm leaving some of that there around it for now. Um, and I'll come back and clean that up with a finer tool. I'm going to zoom the camera in a little bit so you can see the closer work that I'm doing here. Just carefully peeling away the stuff around the knot. And when I'm coming from be like behind the knot like this, starting at the knot and coming down, I can be a little bit more aggressive. It's, it's cutting into the knot is the dangerous part. pocket knife can be good for cleaning these areas up as well.
So I'm down to my ring on this side, but over here there's kind of this um, strip, and I don't know. Looks like it dips in a little bit, so I'm gonna have to use my gooseneck scraper to get down in there. So if I used a flat tool, I'd be cutting into the ring that I want to keep to get down to this. And so I'm going to have to focus on this spot. I don't know if you can see how much it's dipping down here, but it's quite a bit. So you just got to be patient with spots like this. Um, you don't want to blast right through them. It's really important that we get that continuous, uninterrupted growth ring. So go fast where it lets you. Um, and if you need to slow down and take your time, slow down and take your time. I'm just working down this little island here <coughs> around the knot, getting rid of the wood from the earlier growth ring. All right, that's as far as I'm gonna get with the scraper. I think I can clean that up a little bit with some sandpaper later, but I got it down to my growth ring here and I can uh, and keep going. I'm probably gonna leave a little island here where it's still dipped down, but I'm just gonna keep moving forward with my ring here. I've got another knot here, so I'm being careful leading up to the knot. I'm going to put my draw knife right behind it and dig in to get down to my growth ring again.
quite a bit of meat in here. So I'll have to come back with the gooseneck scraper and dig all of that out. So I'm just going to keep going for the bulk of my ring here. So you can see how aggressive I'm able to be on most of this. I'm just hooking under that crumbly wood and tearing out and I can feel confident that there's nothing that's going to catch and dig down into the, the solid late wood back that I'm trying to maintain. It's all just going to skate along that and tear out. I'm just cleaning up the back now, digging out these areas that have the concave back, um, just getting out that strip of growth ring that I couldn't get to with the flat draw knife. Well, that was more involved than I thought it was going to be, but it just goes to show you never know what you're going to get into when you're working on a, a stave. There was a lot more of this concave back um, than I thought there was going to be. Um, I thought this was going to be a fairly straightforward stave to chase the ring on, but it wasn't. So there was a lot more scraper use than I would normally do. If, if most of the back was like this, I would have just been able to rip 99% um, of that off with the draw knife and just had a little bit of cleaning up to do with the scraper. Um, I don't know if you can appreciate the dip in there, but this is what a clean back looks like. Of course, there's still a little bit of fuzz and crumbly stuff on there that I could get um, with sandpaper, but this is good enough to lay out my bow on and then I usually get my bow roughed out, get rid of all the wood that I don't need, um, and then work on just cleaning up what's on my bow. So now that I've got this ring chased down, I'm going to get out some shellac and I'm going to give the whole back a good coat of shellac um, because when you expose some new rings on the back sometimes you get some checking um, if, it, if there's some trapped moisture in there that comes out too fast so it's always a good idea to seal up your back after you chase a ring um, but this bow is ready to lay out and start making a bow out of <laughs> 